So, welcome to the LMG Lightning Talks, where we are going to talk about what LMG has been doing over the last couple of months and a couple of things that are in our immediate future. We'll start with Amit talking about Android kernel uh, topic crunch updates. Hi, my name is Amit. I work at LMG kernel team. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, Linaro Android kernel topic branches which we maintain. Uh, just press space or anything? Space. <laughs> and don't close the browser? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just close so, space. Yeah. So I'll start with LSK topic branches, uh, which we maintain uh, LSK version 3.18 and version 3.4. Uh, uh, so we don't actively maintain 3.18 anymore. Mostly because we don't get any requests to keep it up to date. So I'm just hoping that, I mean, I think that since no one is using it, so I'll just stop updating it. But we still merge uh, LTS trees. So, so this is the topic branch which I sent to, which I sent to uh, Alex C. So he, uh, he then, uh, merge this topic branch into Linux, Linaro, LSK version 3.18 or version 4.4 in right branches. So 3.18, as I said, we are not maintaining it. So I explicitly mentioned that we are, I mean, by we, I mean LMG, not Android or not LTS. So don't get confused there. LSK 4.4, we do update it uh, time to time. Uh, Linaro Android LLCT3 is the tree which, if you are not familiar with, we rebase Android 4.9 patches. Uh, two mainline trees time to time. I think we do it on every RC basis. We do miss one or two RCs, but it is fairly regular. Right, and uh, so uh, the current status is that we have rebased uh, 4.9 patches to 4.14 RC2. Uh, uh, I think somewhere around 4.11 or so, I have dropped the EAS patch set because there was a uh, lot of a uh, lot of uh, refactoring happened at that time uh, in the uh, scheduler code base and it was difficult for me to understand what is going on so I just dropped the EDS patch set. Right. So uh, this is the uh, right. so this is the LLCT status so far. Uh, I mean 4.9 patches on top of 4.14 RC2. The biggest chunk of code is, uh, it used to be networking some time back but now it is SD card FS. Uh, there was a talk at LPC la uh, last to last week about uh, SD card FS streaming. Uh, sorry, upstream was the to be upstreaming. Sorry. So uh, SD card FS upstreaming. So if you are interested in the upstream status of uh, SD card FS, if it is going there or what is happening in that uh, scene, then you can check out this uh, presentation. Uh, then the next uh, chunk of code is uh, next big chunk of code is networking. With 15% in a net filter itself, which is uh, QTAG ID and idle timer uh, and uh, PPT patches, which uh, are there. So, uh, QTAG ID is supposed to be going away sometime soon uh, because they're going to have the same functionality using the upstream EB eBPF implementation. Again, I have posted the link of LPC talk, which happened uh, around this topic uh, during the plumbers. So, if you are interested, you can check it out. Uh, PPP patches, uh, Sam uh, from Linaro, uh, TI assignee has worked on, yeah, <laughs> so, uh, so he has uh, implemented the same functionality using upstream code base, which is already mainline and, you know, all the patches are already pushed to Android Garrett, which are under uh, review. So hopefully, uh, you might be able to drop uh, PPP patches as well. And then we have parallel networking, which I think we'll stay for a while. It's not a big chunk of code, so. <coughs> so uh, next is USB, uh, USB gadget functions, MTP, PTP, uh, audio source, uh, accessories. I ran into one MTP, PTP uh, patch in system core project which says that, you know, we are moving to function FS, so just there are, uh, there's a one particular patch that says that now we are moving to function FS, so <coughs> I'm hoping that that is happening sometime soon. So once we move to function FS, then uh, we should be able to drop MTP and PTP. 
uh, from USB gadgets, but uh, we are still carrying it 4.14. Uh, I'll try to see if the functionality is already there in USB master branch. If it is there, then uh, let's see. Maybe, maybe we should we can get rid of it in 4.14. Uh, then staging FIQ debugger, few changes in Goldfish emulators. Uh, these are standard changes. I mean, these are the standard patches which are there, and I don't think uh, any new changes landed in the same the areas. Key co uh, input drivers, key combo, key reset, key code. Okay, sorry, to be key code and uh, GPI input drivers. I, I, I'm not really sure if we are still using these patches, uh, but uh, I, mean, I have to see if we are still using these patches and if any of uh, if any of Android patches are actually using these uh, functionalities of these drivers. Then there is a bunch of code in app directory, mostly uh, appended DTB support, image DTB, image.gz DTB, uh, rank to configs, command line extension. Uh, we might be able to get rid of command line extension support uh, because there's uh, a similar functionality upstream. So this is something which we have not explored yet. So let's see. Then, uh, uh, there is some code in device mapper uh, drivers uh, specific to a AB updates, Android AB updates, and uh, this uh, per UID system statistics, which you export uh, the statistics to a proc interface. And other miscellaneous changes, MMC SDIO, wake up reasons, and small small changes in MMC subsystem and tracing subsystem. So this was the LLCD stack. LNCT stacks. Just a quick comparison of what was there in 4.9 and what is not there now in 4.14. Uh, low, low memory killer got dropped uh, in mainline 3, I think 4.12 or 4.13 around. Uh, Lip -sync, sync framework has been reworked. Most of it has moved to DMA bus, <coughs> I guess, and debug FS. Right here. And in, uh, interactive governor we have dropped because most of uh, most of the vendors are now using uh, energy aware scheduler, so we are not uh, carry forwarding it to 4.14. Uh, scheduler idle notifiers also. I talked to developers that uh, do we still need that? They said we are okay to drop it, so that is also gone. There are a few uh, WLAN platform headers which we have also dropped because uh, they are not being used since 3.10. Because I, I could see the references in 3.10.com drivers, but, but they are not used anymore. And there are small few patches which were there and uh, no hacks which were committed like nine or ten years ago. So I talked to those uh, developers that uh, do you think we still need these patches or we still need hacks? So most of the time they were like the I tried to contact the author and that email bounced back because the author doesn't work in Google anymore. So I tried I tried asking other people, they said it's safe to remove those patches as well. Uh, Android config fragments got dropped a few days back, so we have dropped it from 4.14 as well. Uh, these are the stats uh, <coughs> per tree basis, the number of lines which we are carrying in 3.18, 4.4, and hopefully, and wh what is the status in LLCT now? This green delta is the EAS patch set which I dropped from 4.9, which I'm not carrying in uh, 4.14. It's a approximate thing, I think it is EAS version 1.1. So uh, most of um, most of the functionality has already been upstream, so it might be a bit less than what is shown here. Okay, so other than LLCT, linear Android kernel trees, uh, I spent some time on uh, Hibernate Resume patch set on Android 4.4. There was a feature request from one of our members to try uh, Hibernate Resume on Android 4.4 kernel specifically, ARM64 platform. At that time, the security <coughs> was not there. Uh, LSK team, Alexi and uh, uh, <coughs> other developers, they backported the feature to uh, Linux Linaro LSK 4.4. Uh, I rebased those patches to Android Hikey. Uh, Hikey was the suitable platform to test that. Uh, so on Hikey, uh, so the issues which I, there are a few issues which I found, which I run into on both Hikey and Hikey 960. I was using Hikey 1 GB board. And Android itself was taking about 750 MB or so, so I was not able to create the image and you know keep it. Uh, it failed at that time itself, so there was no point of trying it back. Uh, other than that, <coughs> if you if you have 2 GB uh, RAM high key as well, 
uh, we went into CPU lockups while trying to enable the Mali clock. So it was sort of a dead end to try it out on Hikey. Uh, since I had Hikey 960, so I tried it on Hikey 960 at that time. It, it, the support was much better uh, because I was able. To, I did not run into any CPU lockups or any other issues. The only problem was that my display did not come up. The my uh, Hikey clock was uh, sorry, Mali clock was enabled, but the display did not come up. Uh, I tried reworking around the DRM driver, but my knowledge in that area is very, very little, actually. So, uh, so, so what I did, I came up with uh, this idea of using virtual frame buffer, right? That the system is already in suspense, so instead of relying on actual, actual frame buffer, let's try this uh, system resume on, on virtual frame buffer and do a recording using screen record in build two, right? So. When the system booted up, I did, I, uh, did this screen recording and I went into uh, suspend to disk and uh, when I powered it on, it resumed from that disk and then I created another video. Of, and I was running monkey test. Right? Monkey test is like you know, sending a certain, uh, sorry, random events to UI. So I could see that the display was behaving the way it should be. So I don't see any reason why uh, I don't see any reason why this patch set is not complete. It's just that we are not able to test it on actual device which has an active display. Right. So that's all uh, from my side. If you have any questions. You mentioned that you brought uh, ES 1.1 features. Uh, so the, can you please throw more light on what exactly you want? Because now ES, my understanding is close to 1.3 to 1.4. Yes. Uh, so, no, I was reversing one dot, the latest patch set only. It's just that by the time I hit 4.11 RC, uh, there was a bit of restructuring in the scheduler code. Right? And uh, I was just reversing. I did not know a bit of that code what just happened there. So it was very difficult for me to do it correctly. So I just dropped the ES patches for whatever I was carrying. But uh, you still have 1.3 or the features of the uh, no, I don't have. No, I'm relying on uh, Google ARM developers who are actually doing that work. Right. And uh, you mentioned something that you have dropped uh, low memory killer. We have not dropped it. It, dropped, it got dropped in memory. So I have not dropped it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, for the low memory killer, I basically got removed from staging. Um, and there's been effort in the past to get a user space solution um, in the past. So I guess a lot of vendors found that the user space solution wasn't sufficient because it wouldn't react quite as fast. Um, so there's apparently further work internally um, for a user space solution, but uh, I haven't seen the details yet. So um, right now, you can get away without it um, using the user space solution for testing, but um, you know, depending on your needs, they need to be pulled back in or something for a device. <laughs> but you've got a little bit of time before a 414 that's probably just up. So. My name is Vincent Kim. I'm from uh, Mobile Group, of course. I will explain a little bit about my work since the last Connect, uh, which is about ASP build with upstream claim. So actually, uh, using upstream claim for building the ASP, ASP master has been my primary work since I joined the Dinaro, which is last year, April. And um, the upstream claim trunk and the ASP master are two moving targets, so we have to continuously watch uh, those two uh, for compatibility. Uh, this work is meaningful in the sense that the, the pre-built claim in the ASP normally lag behind in time uh, three to six months compared to the upstream claim. So uh, currently there is five month gap between the two. So this work allows us to check claim performance on AOSP, uh, especially for ARC64 for build, and it also helps claim to soft land on a AOSP when the time comes. So uh, the the last time I checked is based on the version of the AOSP master and the upstream claim trunk at uh, 13th of September, 
uh, there is no visible performance increase compared to the previous claim, which is kind of good uh, as there is no performance regulation either. So, so in addition to this continuous maintenance work, I have applied some more stuff to the upstream claim for building ASP, which is LLD, Super, and Poly. Uh, so, firstly, LLD is a LLBM linker, which is a drop-in replacement for GNU linkers such as uh, LD, BFD, and Code. So, the current default linker for AAC64 build in ASP is Gold. So, we replaced the Gold with LLD and um, we found some issues such as three missing options and some compa compatibility issues. So, we, we, these, these results are reported to the tool, uh, Toolchain Working Group and I believe some of these issues are currently being uh, dealt with to be uh, for LLD to be more compatible with uh, ASP. So, uh, <coughs> and secondly, Super, which is a people optimizer on LLVM IR. The, this technique is basically tries to find uh, missed uh, opportunities for simplifications on the final LLVM IR. So, and uh, uh, we applied it. Unfortunately, there is also some uh, bugs found. So we, we reported these bugs to the ma uh, major author of this technique. And uh, as a workaround, we, we only applied this technique to Bionic and Benchmark. Uh, but unfortunately, there is no visible performance increase either. And uh, lastly, Poly, which is loop and data locality optimizer. We enabled all these optimizations that it, that it supports namely Scala optimization and automatic OpenMP generation and also vectorizer. And um, as you can see on the graph on the screen, there is no performance uh, increase. Uh, this is until 2 So these results are both fortunate and unfortunate. Uh, it, is, um, uh, it is fortunate in the sense that the, the upstream claim is doing OK without any visible performance regression. But it, it is also unfortunate for me because my, my work for the last couple of months is regarding poly and super uh, has not been paid off. So we also ran out of the items that we want to apply. So I'd like to ask you that if you have any you know, interesting and promising items to apply to the upstream plan for building ASP master, please contact me with the, with the item and the benchmark that can measure the specific changes caused by the by the new stuff, that would be great. Yeah. Yes, please. Can you try out the benchmarks? Because there are benchmarks like have you tried have you tried have you tried benchmarking uh, other workloads, uh, for example next load or other Android related workloads? Yes. This is the only benchmark we shown on the screen, but I have ran some other benchmarks as well for ARC64 or both ARC32 as well, but I haven't seen any you know, visual performance difference. Thanks. And a follow up question for LLD do you see any code size uh, regressions compared to gold? Uh, you mean LLD? Yes. Uh, this is, uh, LLD is not about performance. So I, we haven't ran bench, performance benchmarks, but we compared the size of the resulting binaries. But uh, as I said, there are some compatibility issues. Uh, one, is, uh, one is about relocation packer in Android, which reduces the size of the resulting binaries. It, LLD doesn't work with, with the relocation packer. So the resulting binaries are, LLD is a bit larger than the, the gold. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is uh, uh, Yutin Liu. <coughs> I work for the Yellow Mobile Group. 
here I just uh, will give you a simple introduction about the LCR release. Uh, LCR uh, was released uh, monthly uh, before. Now we will release the LCR builds uh, based on the requirement from various uh, projects or teams. Uh, the released uh, LCR build will uh, will be built with the uh, latest stable Android type and with the kernel from our, uh, our based on RSK or from based on the uh, kernel from AOSP. Uh, on the release site, we will uh, list the features, uh, new changes, and also some optimization changes. Uh, regarding the performance uh, changes, we will include uh, the optimization changes for memory, TAM, and Bionic, or many, something like that. Uh, also, we will uh, update, uh, build the LCR with the uh, uh, new version as the external uh, projects. Uh, about the security <coughs> set, we have the uh, SE Linux and the OPT enabled for the LCR build. We also uh, use a newer tool chain version for some builds, uh, like uh, we uh, build with JCC C, uh, 6 or build with the uh, Clone Master. The test, uh, we run some test uh, with Lava to, in, to uh, ensure the quality of our LCR build. Uh, each, uh, the test include uh, no boot test for basic fun to check the basic functions, uh, benchmark test to uh, ensure there is no regression, uh, and the CTS VTS for compatibility regression check. Uh, we also have the framework CI uh, build for for our LCR use, uh, use that to uh, check the change uh, for different uh, if that change to work, uh, work on different platforms. Sometimes the change might be uh, might work uh, only on specific type uh, platform. Uh, the test. Uh, the test for framework CI also uh, done, um, done with Lava, so that, that could uh, uh, make sure the test uh, is reproducible and uh, the result uh, is stable. Now we are working on the Oreo uh, based build with the Lava V2 support. So more features will come. Here, list some uh, potential improvement in the future. Uh, we uh, might, we will uh, cherry pick more uh, good changes from upstream into uh, the Oreo based uh, builds. <coughs> also, uh, considering to use one common kernel for our platforms, uh, uh, there are two possible. Uh, method one is the user uh, Linando generated build by Rob. Uh, another uh, method is the MST table project view. We also uh, we are also considering to uh, add some to create some platforms to so that we could make the LCR build more uh, automated and more visualized. Uh, if if you have any uh, project want to want us to integrate into the RDW, uh, please test. Yeah, that's all about the RDW. Yeah. So, uh, what if Opti is getting tested in the CR builds today? Opti. Opti. Hi. Uh, oh, you mentioned Opti is integrated in the CR. 
what in Opti is getting checked out as part of the CI releases? Are you testing something with Android T has or are you testing Opti functional tests that gets tested? Uh, we run the app test for the Opti test. Opti feature. <coughs> Uh, second question on the boot time uh, is boot time with Android O measured, and do you have any inputs or observation whether the improvements are seen? Uh, based on the oral build, uh, the optimization uh, tests are not integrated yet. We are uh, we will uh, integrate them on verify the. Of input automation patches we have before for Nagot uh, later. Again, uh, the last time I saw Android and with your optimizations, there was around 20% improvement seen. Is the number similar? Uh, or we expect uh, no improvements because Google already took care of uh, most of the file system side in Android. Sorry, uh, we not uh, uh, have not uh, done comparison between the Nagot uh, and uh, Oreo yet. So, okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is our work on Rx64 build hosts. So why would we want to do that? First of all, because we can probably outrun x86 build hosts these days. 96 called uh, Rx64 box should compile AOSP much faster than a 10 core x86 or so. It's also a test environment for, uh, for build boxes which currently don't have to, uh, that much testing. And a first step towards a totally native build environment. Uh, so the ultimate goal is that you can just uh, do what you do on regular Linux as well, make a couple of modifications uh, right on your device without having to reflash a firmware image or uh, even ADB install something or whatever uh, to test your change. So the current status, compilers, both Clang and GCC based toolchains already, the build tools uh, that live in the pre-builds directory like Zoom, Ninja, ACP and so on are built and ready. <coughs> Build tools with x86 hard codes, there's a lot of those in <coughs> Zoom, uh, have been ported to detect the CPU type and uh, call the right binaries. Uh, all the related work is ported to 800R12, and we have a patch set that is quite easy to rebase on uh, master changes. But there's one thing missing, the builds aren't working yet. The current problem is that uh, ninja files generated by Zoom differ from the counterparts created on x86 boxes, and we don't really know what's going on there yet. So this is still a work in progress, and we should have further updates by the next connect. Mm, most of the differences between those uh, ninja files uh, don't look that big. This is some of the error messages we are getting. Uh, those can be worked around by just making sure all the uh, VM builds are built at runtime, even though they are already there in the pre-builds tree. But then uh, it just results in more errors about duplicated definitions, so we really have to dig more into the build system. There's probably not much more missing. All the pre-builds are there, and t uh, tests for all those binaries are working as they should. Mm, but it's just this generation of the ninja files uh, that seems to have uh, one or two things we are missing. But it's one of those things that can uh, simply require a lot of time to find and then fix. So there are any questions on Rx64 build hosts? Any plan on upstreaming some of these changes? Of course, as soon as it's working, uh, we'll try to upstream everything. Mm, then, obviously, 
whether or not it will be accepted is not up to us. But so far, pretty much the reception has been, uh, yes, if it works, but don't bother us until it's done. Okay. Um, next topic is uh, CSTD integration, which is work mostly done by Satish, who unfortunately isn't with Lenaro anymore. So what is it? It's a new compression system that can give speeds comparable to LZ4, which is a very fast but not very efficient compressor. And it can also provide file sizes comparable to LZMAXC. And, um, one of the goals to, uh, while we are doing this was speeding up the boot process uh, because uh, if we can compress the file system uh, if it's a sm a small, that will speed up on the uh, devices with slow I.O. And uh, if the compression algorithm itself is fast, it will speed up on the, uh, low end CPUs. So we've added the compression algorithm to the kernel, <coughs> both for image in, in a DRAMFS, uh, at least in the RMB7 world, in the RMB8 world, that uh, work is mostly done by the bootloader. And then the more interesting bits, we added it to SquashFS. Uh, independently, the upstream project uh, added support in BTRFS. So this is some initial benchmarks we've uh, run on Heike. The, uh, the first boot actually has uh, CSTD a little slower than LZ4, which is uh, little odd, but on the next boots it uh, can outperform the uh, LZ4 even. And the interesting bit is that uh, this is on X15, so speed is again comparable. But the interesting bit is this, the system image went down from 581 me megabytes to 271. So we can save almost half the space. So, wrapping that up, it was certainly worth doing. And, uh, we should probably keep it up, uh, update those patches, uh, think with newer CSTD releases. Mm, probably also investigate if there's any other places in AOSP other than file systems that could benefit from this new compression. Okay, that's what we had on compression. Questions? When you say the decompression is done, does that mean upstream? Um, it's not upstream yet, but it's uh, working in our releases and it's uh, heading upstream. Anything else? No? Then let's move on to U-Boot upstreaming. Uh, so hi everyone, my name is Sam Protek and I'm from Mobile Group and I'd like to provide some uh, quick uh, update on new boot of streaming. So uh, first iteration of my work was done between, uh, uh, as between February, uh, or I think it's something messed up in this, okay, so it was uh, from second part of uh, 2016 and 2017 and uh, now, uh, total 23 patches in there and you can you can use this link uh, below to actually see those list uh, so it was added fast boot support for IM57 boards and uh, uh, enabled the load gadget, this bit of load gadget, and enabled fast boot uh, setting needed variables like serial and uh, uh, fixing USB controller uh, in fast boot code uh, and adding uh, new fast boot USB dev options and so on. And also, I, I added uh, Android partition table so we are able to actually boot Android later. Yeah, and uh, tricky part was uh, 
you would maintainers wanted me to actually move some uh, config options to kconfig because he would now is moving to kconfig the same as used in kernel. So they actually don't accept your patches before you uh, you step up and do some previous work uh, with converting those options if you want to use those options. So I actually, you can see this here uh, that uh, a lot of options were converted. And, uh, there is actually, uh, right now, we have already an automation script that can convert some easy options for you, but uh, for really hard cases, you need to do this uh, semi-manual. Okay, so uh, on second iteration, which was done from uh, May to September uh, 2017, uh, I actually finished uh, first boot support and uh, boot and Android from EMMC for X15 board and uh, DRA7 board as well. And total count of patches is 15. The link is the same. And uh, what I did is I actually added a uh, patch uh, that was long pending on TI3 for flashing Z image and uh, with fast boot. Uh, I actually uh, did some setting of output variables like uh, user data size and uh, secure and uh, board name and so on. Uh, fixed some bugs with uh, the load gadget uh, and uh, modified, also I modified some configuration <coughs> to be able to boot Android from EMMC. Like fixing partition table and uh, adding uh, commands for booting from a, from MMC, uh, and uh, I was done as well some collateral patches for moving config options and refactoring some refactoring and uh, extracting some environments and so on. Because as I said, uh, maintainers often want you to actually do some previous work and. I also have some pending patches, but I guess it will be accepted really soon. So uh, I was asked to provide some uh, learnings from this experience, and uh, so as I said, you you will be asked often to to do some collateral work before you can actually add some features and uh, and do work what you want to do. So, and that's okay, it's normal process, so you need to work uh, with maintainers to do so. Uh, yes, so you also uh, often, when you need some work, you always need to consider impact on other platforms. Uh, it, actually, uh, it actually made me revert not, not me, some other guy re reverted my page because it actually uh, it actually broke broke some other platforms like Bigelbone Black or something. So uh, when you're doing something, you really need to to think or, or test on other platforms or think how how it can impact other platforms. And that's also I can add that uh, you need to actually build your bot for all platforms and see if any you can see any warnings or errors on that. Uh, and actually U-Boot has nice script for that called Buildman, which can uh, automatically build uh, patches you specify to it for, for all platforms you specify to it. And you actually can do that uh, if you don't want to do that on your machine because it can take a lot of time. You can actually use uh, Travis CI for this, like uh, just clone you boot repository on GitHub, GitHub and uh, just just run Travis CI for you. Uh, also, uh, I can say that uh, even though I was doing uh, this work uh, mostly on my uh, X15 board, uh, like the half of this work is was connected to generic code, even more, 
uh, because, as I said, you often can be asked to to do some previous work, like a factoring and uh, adding some features and uh, uh, moving config options and so on. So I can say that doing this work, uh, I just uh, created some path you can use for other platforms to to really uh, to really sorry to to have this uh, the same support for Fast Boot and Android Boot and for other platforms. So you, you can use it as template. Also, along the way, you can come up with some useful tools or, or scripts or something like that. So you can see these links. It's uh, uh, tools and scripts I provided for, for other to be used for similar job. So, so you actually, if you need to convert some config uh, options to okay, config, uh, and you can uh, you can be asked to do so. You can actually use those scripts and do this a lot uh, a lot faster. Yes. Also, the good thing, the good practice is to use uh, commonly used uh, tools like Buildman and Move Config and so on. You can you can see tools directory, scripts directory, and uh, read some documentation because it can simplify your life uh, like a lot. And uh, probably the most uh, important uh, thing I can say is uh, you need to get acquainted with maintainers. You can discuss uh, things you, you want to do in IRC, in mail address, uh, be before doing that actually. Because uh, often when you do some things, they can get rejected because maintainers don't want this to, to be done this way. Uh, they, they have some very specific way to do uh, those things in, in their minds, so it's really good to communicate. It's like my main stuff. So, uh, further directions in U boot uh, can be uh, adding some stuff for Android O support. It's uh, GTB overlays uh, in U uh, boot fit images. Uh, Android verified boot support, uh, adding vendor partition, and so on. And also for OMA platforms, I'd like to, to do switching to from uh, from uh, from old TTI O serial console, which is OMA serial driver, to uh, regular AT250, which is TTI S. But uh, this is this should be done in kernel probably first and uh, should be discussed with maintainers before doing that. Okay, that's it. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah, that's all the topics we have prepared. So we have four minutes left. If anyone has any other questions in any way related to LMG, we can take them. And it looks like there are none. Thank you.